How are you all doing? The protection of the Lord will not be far from you in Jesus' name. The goodness of the Lord will continually be upon each and every one in Jesus' name. I hope you have a wonderful and a fantastic week. It is my prayer that the goodness of the Lord is preservation will not be far from you in the name of Jesus. So today by the special grace of God, we are considering a topic before us, Mrs. Lot, a pillar of salt. Mrs. Lot, a pillar of salt. I pray that as we look at this topic, it will be a blessing to us. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this message. We pray that the grace to learn what you want us to learn in this message and not to find ourselves in these um, shoes of Mrs. Lord, a pillar of salt. Please grant unto us, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today, we are looking at this topic, Mrs. Lot, a pillar of salt. You know, Lot was the son of Haran and the nephew of Abraham. His name is thought to mean to wrap closely. Lot means to wrap closely. The many of that name is to wrap closely. He was a companion of Abraham in Canaan and he traveled around with Abraham until they decided to part ways. And when it was time for them to part ways, Lot, the husband of Mrs. Lot, chose to go to Sodom despite the fact that they went their separate, their separate ways, Abraham continued to look out for his nephew. So Lot was actually Father Abraham's nephew. Now, today we are talking about Lot's wife. You see, Lot's wife is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis chapter 19. If you read verse 15 to 26, you are going to find a story there. You see, some, some other mention of her are also found in the, you know, in the book of wisdom, which is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 7. And we are also going to be reading some selective verses as well in genesis also okay so let us read genesis chapter 19 verse 15 it says and when the morning arose then the angels esteemed the lord saying arise take thy wife thus mrs lord and thy two daughters which are ye lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city and while he lingered the man laid hold upon his end and upon the end of his wife and upon the end of his two daughters the lord be merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad. And he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape, escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. Escape to the mountains lest thou be consumed. Verse 18, And Lord said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified 
thy mercy which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life and i cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and i die behold now this city is nigh is near to flee unto and it is a little one oh let me escape thither is it not a little one and my soul shall live and my soul shall live verse 20 be, uh, verse 21 and he said unto him see i have accepted thee concerning this thing also that i will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken is thee escape tida for i cannot do anything till thou become tida therefore the name of the city that the angel of god allow in uh, lot and his family to escape to is called Zoa, Z O A how Zoa. So verse twenty three said the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoa. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of um, heaven. And verse twenty five, and he overthrew those city and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground see this is where we are going to it's in verse 26 but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt and she became a pillar of salt his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt I pray that we will not look back in Jesus' name. So, we can also see this in Luke chapter 17, verse 32 as well. It says, remember Lot's wife. You see, remember Lot's wife. And if you go to Genesis, the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis chapter 19, verse 26, it told us right there that Lot's wife became a pillar of salt. You see, um, this is where we find a famous transformation. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Interestingly, the verse doesn't say that she was turned into salt. Okay. God turned her into the verse did not tell us that what the verse simply states is that she became a pillar of salt not that she turned into a pillar of salt so let's go back briefly to the story of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in order to get there we will have to go a, a bit further back to Genesis chapter 18 in Genesis chapter 18, we can see and Gomorrah that um, they were corrupt. Okay, they were land, they were full of corruption. And when their cup was full for judgment, you know, God had informed Abraham because you know, even though they had separated, uh, Lot and Abraham at one point in time had separated. Like I told you at the initial of this message in the introduction, that Lot was Abraham's nephew. God revealed it to Abraham that it was going to be, you know, destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham had pleaded and pleaded and pleaded. Okay. And now, uh, and now you, the, the Lord had to send the angels of God to, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah to go and rescue Lot and his family. I want you to create time to read Genesis 18 verse 1 to 33. You'll be able to get the full details of what i'm saying there so you know as we go on in our message uh what we are to learn about mrs lot a pillar of salt is this everyone has a past some of us have you know locked spectacular uh, more failures you know while others some of us have managed to confine our sin to less horrifying categories when I say some of us does not necessarily include me, but 
i want to put everybody together now okay so some of us have locked you know i've locked um spectacular moral failures all right while others you know have managed to confine their sins to less horrifying category the longer we know christ the more we come to realize that all sin is spectacular when measured against the plumb lines of god's holiness all sin is a spectacular exercise in self-focus and self-worship and the truth is that the saving faith that we find in christ it frees us from every sin power it enables us to choose what god wants over what we want and over time it align our wants with the wants of god even it align our needs with what god needs us to do so instead of wanting to make much of ourselves we learn to make much of our maker our god so but if we are honest we still harbor places of self-worship in our hearts you know in our heart of hearts and as we get better at setting aside one area of sin we often get better at concealing at an uh, another either the affection for the world or one sin or the other so as much as we long to move forward in grace we find out that our past still pulls at us which to be sincere it shouldn't be and i want you to know that it is not enough for you to recognize and regret your sin no it is not enough for us to recognize and regret our sin we are to leave all sins behind us we are to learn from any sin that we have sinned and we are to detest sin you know i use the word detest selectively because detest means to hate something with passion so you are to hate sin so now when we talked about mrs lot you know the metaphor about her is that she is a metaphor for our being stuck in the past and unable to move forward when changes knock upon our door you know when somebody knock on your door you know you 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 open the door in order to you know receive the person so when changes knocks at the door okay uh, opportunity they say knocks at the door one expects to welcome it so the metaphor is that when changes knock at her door she she did not open her heart the door of her heart to that changes so this story not only is it warning us it's also one us out of trouble with being stuck in the past so we should not allow anything to make us to be stuck in the past it also give us a road map for navigating change okay often when dramatic changes occur in our lives especially those that cause great up um, of evil we long for the way things were in the past you know most times we don't want to embrace uh, new things we don't want to embrace People are saying technology, technology. There are some people they are stuck with the way things are in the past. They don't want to embrace technology. You know, they don't want to embrace information. They don't want to embrace anything that will give them that push. So we should. So we shouldn't cling to what has been familiar and comfortable to us, whether the change is desired or not lingering in the past can make it difficult or even impossible to move into a new chapter in our life and this was the issue of mrs lot she has so much cling to her past that it was not easy for her to accept the new things that was to come so now we know or if you wonder that what if god had shown mercy to mrs lot what if she had been allowed to flee the wickedness of sodom 
to Zohar, you know, the Lord has permitted them that it's not going to destroy that city. You know, since that is where they chose, instead of going to the mountain, that God had also considered that and that they were allowed to go to Zohar. So the question is, what if God had forgiven um, Mrs. Lord for looking back, you know, what if God had shown her mercy and she had been allowed to move along with her husband to Zohar, okay? What if, you know, there is a lot of what if when I don't know maybe you do that when you read the Bible as when you read the Bible you you ponder on it okay what if she had been allowed to flee the wickedness of Sodom to Zohar to a better place you know but the truth is if she had been allowed you I, we can we can think as human being that she will be harboring in her heart a love for the past. And the love for the past is what God himself does not even encourage us to go into. You know, that's why the Bible says that when you give your life to Jesus, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So your way of seeing, your way of doing things, your, your, mod, your mode of dressing, your your character the way you talk to people you know the way you view things the way you address situation if you are somebody that abuses that causes vulgar languages you know they change the bible says all things even the friends you keep you they change because all things have passed away and all things have become new so the virus if God has shown mercy, another thing is maybe the virus of sudden wickedness would have gone with her to her new home. You know, maybe when she sits there, I remember, ah, you know, in Sodomo, and we used to do this. In Sodom, I remember this, my friend, she, she did this, she did that. Maybe the virus of Sodom would have gone with her to her new home, you know because it's we, we can see for her to have looked back what we can tell is that those things that were being done in sodom has been preserved deeply rooted within her you know so waiting its chance to emerge you know so if she had been allowed you know maybe she would have affected other people you know all the places in zoa the women in zoa that they were going to maybe she would have done the same thing so rather than allow her to preserve the cherished memory of sodom and gomorrah in a new place god preserved her as a pillar of salt so she became a pillar of salt she became a memorial for the preservation of evil she became a warning to all who might see her frozen, okay? Who might see her frozen in a half-turned gaze of longing, okay? So, the what we are to learn is that if your spiritual gaze were frozen at this instance, on what would it be fixed? That's the question I'm asking you. If your spiritual gaze were frozen at this time what would it be fixed on because the spiritual gaze of mrs lot was fixed on sodom and gomorrah the place that got so much you know that cup was so much full god had brought judgment upon them god so much was unhappy with the place that he had to consume the place with fire god created the universe imagine yourself as a human being creating something and the thing not turning out well and having to burn it with fire you know it's something that touches the heart that makes the heart to be sorrowful it's something that saddens the heart so of course we cannot say that god derives joy in consuming sodom and gomorrah with fire you know it is their cup of judgment that was full so imagine a putting a gaze on such a place so if your spiritual gaze were to be frozen like mrs lot the question is what would your own you know spiritual gaze also be faced 
you know, on what would it be feast? Every day of our life is a choice to look forward towards life-giving grace or backward towards sin saturated death. Every second that we have to live on earth, every minute, every hour, every day, you know, it is an opportunity for us. Is your spiritual gaze, are you looking forward towards the life-giving grace that God had given to us? Or are you looking backward, you know, in towards sin, saturated deaths? Will you choose self-focus or will you choose God-focus? How will you be memor uh, memorialized, you know? When people remember you, what will be your memory? You know, when people are talking about me uh, memoria about you, what will you be memorialized on? You know, as someone who preserves the pleasure of sin, or as someone whose profits, you know, of sanctification is being shown to others. My prayer today is that the wrath of God will not exterminate his purpose in our life in jesus name and i pray that the the mercy of god will wreak us from god's wrath in the name of jesus and every godless, godlessness of the former days of past you know the aroma of god's grace will point towards us today and give us a new life that our eyes will be fixed on our savior in jesus name remember lord's wife you know, whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it. That's what the Bible says. And But whoever loses his life will keep it. Luke chapter 17, verse 32 to 33. So, um, as we are considering on the story of Lot and his wife, encourages us to eat for the eels, for higher ground. You know, Lot's family could have gone anywhere, but they were specifically guided to leave the valley because the valley is a low place and they were moved with haste to the hills, you know. So a hill is higher ground and higher place that God has destined for each and every one of us. Metaphysically, this also represents a higher place in consciousness where we remember we are one with God. From this high place in mind, we can consciously form a new thought about whatever change is occurring in our life. It is the new thought that the Lord has given to us that will take us to this higher grace that the lord has provided for us and i also want us to know that from a new thought from a new thought okay whatever change is occurring in our life from that new thought we will also receive higher consciousness and that higher consciousness will also lead us through the change okay with the change we will find it come along with ease with grace and also with peace in fact a higher thought may even lead us through change with a sense of adventure and excitement you know if lot's wife had all of this you know she would have in her heart that ah it's an adventure you know to even go to zoa to know what Zohar looks like, you know, and all of that, the excitement will be there that, thank God, I am not perishing. But we can learn that all of this we couldn't see in her. So the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is a familiar one in the Bible. You know, the story of so Sodom and Gomorrah is a very familiar one in the Bible. It begins, like I have told you, with the man named Abraham leaving the city of her and his nephew and I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth when it's time for us to choose we are not going to choose something that we 
end our lives you know or something that will make us to lose our partner or any of our children because when it was time for lots to choose maybe if he had chosen a different place from sodom and gomorrah maybe his wife wouldn't have become a pillar of salt we can only speculate at this point in time but the fact is that he made a choice and he shows you know sodom and gomorrah also i also want us to have some more take home lesson this message number one the lord always lead i want you to know that the lord always lead a person you know lord's wife he, she assisted in entertaining the angels when they visited their house you know warning the family of sodom impending destruction often we don't receive such a blatant warning of judgment but the holy spirit is merciful enough to draw uh, to draw out sinful behavior or conditions of our hearts of our behavior to our um, attention by all accounts god was merciful to have included uh, lot's wife in the command to evacuate before the destruction so it's not that lot's wife has not been informed about this because she is actually the one that entertained the angels so she had to be informed about it so we can see that one can presume that lot's wife was not a believer and the warning could be drawn as a parallel to a lack of conviction romans chapter 12 verse 2 you know the believer is strengthened by the promise of god's guidance paul wrote do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of god what is good and acceptable and perfect will of god now remember your first love another lesson is that you should remember your first love and you should flee from the bondage of sin when i said you i'm also talking to myself we need to remember our first love for god and we need to flee from the bondage of sin you know from lot's wife who became a pillar of salt we can see that lot allowed his wife to unduly pressure him to abide in sodom she knew whom she married and his blessed knowledge and commitment yet she had no desire for spiritual commitment for her own self we can see in second peter chapter 2 verse 6 to 8 we learn of lot's travail when he spoke of the destruction of sodom and gomorrah you know um it's you know we can see right there when uh, it's been said that sodom and gomorrah the city of sodom and gomorrah turned to ashes you know which means god condemned them to extinction making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly and if he rescued righteous lot greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked for as that righteous man lived among them day after day he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard so when we are convicted about the sin in our lives there is no time for delay we must flee from all of every sin immediately god always give us a way out of sin when something and god always give us an out when something or somewhere is not beneficial for our spiritual health lot understood god's warning and he knew that he needed to take it serious and he took it serious even though lot's wife had the same warning she did not fully actively exist sodom because she had doubts 
it would actually happen you know the same is true for us when we fail to act according to god's direction there is at least a hint of doubt when there is at least a hint of doubt and hope god will wink his eyes or turn away from such a one so we can see that that's one of the reason why lot's wife became a pillar of salt so don't turn your years don't turn a deaf years you know a deaf years is when you are aware of something but you decide to act like you are not aware of that thing or you you have doubts is god actually going to do this is god really going to punish me you know i need you to know that when god speaks we need to be obedient to god okay another thing we need to also learn from lot's wife mrs lot is that faith requires both feet and not strangling okay our faith it requires both feet and not strangling no strangling at all you know lot's wife was so associated and entangled she was so entangled with the world she could not exist without at least a glance back you know to what she was leaving behind in luke chapter 17 verse 31 we are warned concerning god's judgment on that day let the one who is on the house top with his goods in the house not come down to take them away and likewise let the one who is in the field not turn back similarly many who are killed or injured by house fires are those who go back into the place to save valuables you know when we make the decision to follow christ we must fully repent from the past behaviors which drew us into a realization of our sinful state so consider this teaching in sephaniah chapter 1 verse 12 which warns us of a time when i will search the jerusalem with lamp and how we punish the men who are complacent those who say in their hearts the lord will not do good nor will he do ill the man who believes yet physically allows the flesh to be satisfied by the word denies god's righteousness you know and jesus also asked us in revelation chapter 3 verse 15 he said rebuke the he rebuked the ladosian church i've preached about churches before the old seven churches and the, and i also gave some on it he rebuked the ladosian church for their lukewarm conditions you see lot's wife was lukewarm we cannot see the complete example of a christian of a genuine sincere believer who is all out there for god in her so we can see the con uh, spiritual condition as being lukewarm so you know he declared god declared in his jesus christ to one us he said i know your works you are neither cold or not or hot you know we, the lord's wife was neither cold or hot i remember the bible told to the bible tells us that if you are not cold if you are not hot if you are lukewarm that god is going to spew such an individual from his mouth you know so why said would i would that you were either cold or hot so if you are cold you are hot you know in, in your back they, they they do say something they say oh she say gay, say gay. you know people cannot actually tell where you stand so that is what the bible is saying the person is either cold lot's wife was either cold or hot you should not be lukewarm you should not be lukewarm so that god will not spill you out of his mouth also another lesson we can learn is that we should um trust divine inspiration okay we should trust divine inspiration remember lot and his family they knew of the sin and corruption within the confines of sodom yet they both continued to blend in among the worldly society and the angels of god warned the family of the immediate and complete destruction that was to come to sodom and gomorrah 
So the evil and sinful desires of the Sodomite so society was fully illustrated when the men of the Sodom sought relations, sought to have you know sexual sin with the angels. You know, in First Corinthians chapter two, verse four, Paul explains. My message and my preachings were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the spirit power. Believers have the same divine inspiration today by and through the presence of the Holy Spirit. The gift of discernment allows the Christian to spiritually interpret the intention of people and situation. The Holy Spirit guidance can always be trusted because he is the spirit of truth so we are reminded of this assurance also in john chapter 16 verse 13 that when the spirit of truth comes he will guide us into all truths for he will not speak on his own authority but whatsoever he hears from god whatever he hears he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Even the Holy Spirit can even reveal to you what somebody is planning against you. If you listen, if you know how you hear from God, you can tell, you know, you can tell when God is speaking to you. When the Holy Spirit is passing a message across to you. Also, another thing we can also learn from um, Mrs. Lot, a pillar of salt is that set your hearts on things from above and not on things of the world. You see, Lot's wife, whether or not a native Sodomite, she lived in Sodom prior to her marriage to Lot. So she knew of but probably did not understand the ramification of her husband residence in Sodom. However, she forsook her husband's spiritual responsibility by satisfying her own desire to live in Sodom. You know, to live in US is different from to live in US. I will give you an example. If you are living in US, you can live in United States of America and serve God and do all you can for god you can live anywhere in the world and serve god and you know be spiritually con conscious and spiritually serve god and you can also live in us or live in anywhere and blend to the sin that goes on in that place so that is what I'm trying to tell you. So when you are in a place, you are not to blend to the negativity, to the bad influence that is taking on or going on or taking place in that place. You are to be able to deny yourself from all those bad things happening there. So that's what I'm telling you. So however, she forsook us husband spiritual responsibility by satisfying her own desire to continue to live the lifestyle and you know enjoy the way of life in sodom and gomorrah in second peter chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 we are taught about judgment regardless of family connection the lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials that is to come and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment so my father is a pastor my mother is a prophetess that qualifies me to get to heaven it's not it's not what the bible says each of us your father your mother you yourself even husband wife children each of the child grandchildren great grandchildren each of us individual of us we are going to stand before god and we are going to be judged each of us will stand in the world individual before god and be and be judged so it is god's judgment it's to it's not based on uh, family connection at all we need to know that 
and this is also especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh despite authority bold and arrogant they are not afraid to heap you know abuse or curse on celestial being so be very careful in your ways of life in colossians 3 verse 2 and colossians chapter 3 verse 5 we are encouraged to set our mind on things above and not on earthly things and to put to death therefore whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immoral immorality impurity lust evil desires greed which is idolatry lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt when she ran out of the city despite the warning not to do so so when we are so indwelled and so enthralled with the world with the things of the world we ultimately meet the same demise christians we are called to be the salt of the earth as salt has always been used as a preservative for food so when we are the correct witnesses for christ we exemplify god's goodness christ's goodness and we lead others to seek a relationship with god so ironically by becoming a pillar of salt lot's wife became an internal part of sodom you know so i pray that god will help us that we will not um after receiving the mercy of god we will not find ourselves you know looking back and you know going again into god's judgment in jesus name so another thing we need to learn from this is also that close to grace isn't sufficient let's say this is grace right here okay and you are like this okay this is grace right here and this is you you are like this you are close to grace it is not sufficient at all it is it isn't sufficient we are specifically told in second peter chapter 2 verse 7 that lot was a righteous man he was the nephew of abraham who was promised that his family would be spiritually prosperous lot's wife shared many of the adventures and trials with her husband so during a period of unrest lot was taken captive and ultimately rescued by abraham lot's wife experienced this ordeal as well yet we should remember that she remained lost and untouched lot's wife arose early in that morning the family was to escape sodom okay the morning they were to escape sodom she rose early along with her husband you must remember that she made the first step towards the safety by beginning the flight with her husband however she then lingered behind before ultimately looking back towards the city so we can see by her assistance and disobedience she was struck dead her assistance and disobedience make her to be struck dead and her grace period expired at that moment so even though lot was caught up in the sinful state of sodom it was ultimately saved from destruction by his faithful withdrawal there is no provision at all that is called half grace or half loss when a person is lost a person is lost when you have the grace of god you do have the grace of god you know in Acts chapter 26 verse 28 we can see the story of Greek, uh, king agrippa he told paul do you think in such a short time you can persuade me to be a christian you see despite the preaching and witness of paul agrippa was able to see the benefits of christ but was unwillingly to make such a commitment we should not be like that and the same thing we can see from lot's wife she was unwilling to make such a commitment to live 
you know, Sodom and Gomorrah behind. Another thing we can learn also from her is that backsliding is gradual. Yes, backsliding is gradual. You know, we are told from the scripture that Lot's wife lingered behind during the rush to vacate Sodom and Gomorrah. So when we make the decision to follow Christ, we make the faithful efforts to stand by his side. However, as time passes, we can find ourselves drifting back and settling into our past habits and complaining. Consider the fall of Peter in the second chapter of Luke. In Luke chapter 22, verse 30, we can see Peter misplaced his self-confidence. Yea, as in the gospel of Mark, Peter insisted he was ready to, to, to go with Christ, no matter whether it is to prison or to death. Peter conceits then soon led to a life lacking in prayers so in luke 22 verse 40 peter was instructed by jesus to pray but instead he was found asleep when christ returned just as lot's wife lingered behind we are told in luke chapter 22 verse 54 peter followed at a distance when we find separation from christ there is enduring of the fellowship and channel of communication between such an individual and Christ. Before we round up, we can also learn is that a strong family need a strong mother. Okay, as women, because we are talking about Mrs. Lot, a pillar of salt. As women, we need to understand that for a family to be strong, there is need for a strong Christian mother. So we can see that immediately after Lot's wife perished, each of our two daughters con contrived the plan to get their father drunk and to lie with him for the purpose of preserving his seed. The daughters reason in Genesis 19 verse 31, there is no man around here to give us children as is the custom all over the earth. So they certainly all could have benefited from the presence, wisdom, and guidance of a loving mother if she was there with them. In Proverbs chapter 31, you know, if you have, well, I want you to read the whole of Proverbs chapter 31. You know, from there we can learn that a righteous woman bring her husband good, not harm all the days of her life in verse 27 it says we are we can also see a priorities as well she watches over the affair of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. i also want you to know that since god had approved that they should go to zoar you know and the city of zoar has been um reserved for them that the lord will not burn that city so which means that you know like i said earlier their destiny fulfillment the progress the family is supposed to make is already been forwarded you know god had already given them grace to go and prosper to go and establish to go and be fruitful you know to dwell in zua you know where the, the lineage will be continued and the blessing of God will be continued in, in their life. So, which means that she, she, Mrs. Lord, shouldn't have even thought of Sodom and Gomorrah anymore because her destiny, her gains, her losses, everything has now been handed in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know. Also, we need to know that our destiny is not tied to a friend, you know, a friend or circumstances or something, you know. When God says it is time to go to the next level, it is time to go to the next level. We shouldn't look below, you know. It's like somebody that wants to climb a ladder. If you want to climb a ladder, 
you know you 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 as you climb up and up you you are looking up you are being careful because you don't want to miss a step because if you miss a step while climbing the ladder what happens to that individual if that individual does not quickly cash well, what happens the person will fall down right so you don't want to miss the ladder so when god says it is time to go you know to another place it is time to move that means it is time for the next ladder of greatness opportunity to come in to your life so you are to make use of it don't look down while the lord is asking you to look up to climb the ladder of achievements okay so these are the errors these are one of those things that you know mrs lot did not look into and we should not be such a, an individual we should not be such a person you know we can also learn from her that um our life should be pleasing to god you know we sh our life should be pleasing to god and um i pray that the lord will help us that we will not lose the opportunity that he had given to us you know in i've once discussed about lost opportunity before so you can search my messages you will see it there you know opportunities comes to us you know, the grace we able to take advantage of it and not lose it god will continually give unto us so what i want you to do is that i want you to picture something okay um picture now lot's wife running away from the city she has only a few things on her back only what she could carry her husband and her two youngest children are at her side and although she feel a certain sense of relief you know at having escaped the impending catastrophe nevertheless her heart is broken god had shown her mercy to have avoided the catastrophe that was to befall sodom and gomorrah yet she still feel broken at heart so although god has instructed her not to you know look back and god had part the same message to her husband to her children not to look back if she had been obedient to god her, her husband did not look back her children did not look back so if she had been obedient to god she wouldn't have looked back i want you to remain to also remember and to know that obedience to god is very paramount also obedience to god no matter the challenges that comes our way we need to be obedient to god and also i want you to know also that she thinks of all her friends that she has left be behind okay she remembered her home she remembers you know possibly the home that she and her husband had also built and she also remembered the memories that they had made in sodom and gomorrah possibly the streets where her children first learned to walk so soon you know as she was running she remembered that soon it will be gone so as lot and the family were now fleeing from sodom and gomorrah you know god had instructed them to make haste god did not even say run god said make haste to run for the hills you know and most importantly like i said not to turn back and see the destruction that will soon before their former home and so they are to take off immediately but remember the temptation to look back was too great for her so no matter what comes your way avoid the temptation to look back do not succumb to temptation else that person will fall into divine judgment so despite god's instruction for her not to do so she turns around and look back at the city which immediately she got god's divine judgment she was punished by being transformed into a pillar of salt okay so there's a song that says there are things that i love and oh dear to my heart i just borrowed they are not mine at all 
Jesus, help me to use them for your glory. For I borrow them. They are not mine at all. Possibly if she had remembered that those things that she had enjoyed over there were borrowed. That they are not hers. And that where God was taking her to, God is more than able to even give her double. There's a possibility that she wouldn't have looked back. So women, I'm calling the attention of women today. Don't let the fashion of the world, don't let the things of the world. When God tells you it's time for you to move and you can see all the signs that God wants you to relocate. God wants you to live where you are living. If you are cutting with somebody, you can tell that God wants you to move. Don't let, you know, this old on ah this is where my children grew up in this is where my child knows this is where i grew up in this is where my parents are this is where this this is where that this is where my friends are don't let that to tie you down because women or generally people if if it ties us down we will not be able to move forward and when your destiny is tied to a place that god does not want you to be tied to such a person will not be able to fulfill destiny. So, if Lot's wife had f gone with the flow of God and not think of those things that I mentioned, in, okay, she would have been able to fulfill destiny. So, in a nutshell, she aided her destiny in being cut short. So I don't know who is out there, who God is saying, move. Or who God is asking to do something and you are restraining yourself from doing it or you are keeping yourself or you are considering this and considering that before you obey God I don't know but you know I feel moved within me to just come online and add this to the message obey obedience is better than sacrifice so let us learn to obey God no matter the cost God knows what he's doing. He's a wise God. He's your creator. He's your maker. So obey and the blessing of obedience shall be your portion. Shall be our portion in Jesus name. So finally, I want you to know that losing your life to Christ is victory. Okay. Losing your life to Christ is victory. But losing your life to the world is the downfall of an individual in luke 17 verse 32 to 33 jesus christ says remember lord's wife whoever try to keep their life will lose it and whoever lose their life will preserve it as you follow after god know that every bit of his word is for you his truths are worth looking forward to his truths are what holding on to and his truths are what learning from every day as we have studied today about the life of lord's wife i pray that you will continually obey the voice of god in jesus name so do not look back okay do not look back looking back you know if you are a child of god and you have and you look back that's backsliding so if you have backslided and you of course you are still alive you can hear my voice i pray that the lord will minister to you so that you will come back home return back to the lord you know being alive means that god is showing you mercy he wants you to return back return back to the lord Tell the Lord to forgive you for from backsliding. I've been in that state before and the Lord had mercy and brought me back home. So there's nothing like I've uh, been in Christ, I left and I cannot come back. You can come back. You know, you can come back. You can see all the points that have been mentioned. So come back home. Come back to the Lord. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, well, you've heard about Mrs. Lord today. You know, come come to the Lord. Ask the Lord to forgive you your sin, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, to write your name in the book of life so that at the rapture sound, 
you can be rapturable. And if by death the Lord decides to take us home, so that you and I, every one of us, will make it to heaven at last. And also daily pray that the Lord will give you grace to overcome temptation during the hours of temptation. And after the Lord had forgiven your sin, ask God to also lead you to a Bible-believing church where your newfound faith will grow in the Lord. So stay rapturable, my friends and families, my loved ones. Stay rapturable, everyone. Till I come online again, remain blessed. Thank you and let us pray. Father, we thank you for teaching us today about Mrs. Lord, the pillar of salt. We, we pray that every lesson that you have taught us today about her, we pray that we will take it to heart in Jesus' name. For those that repent from their sins, forgive them, Lord, in Jesus' name. For those that are backsliding and they say, I want to come back home, Father, please let them have divine restoration back home in Jesus name back to the Lord in Jesus name father we use this medium to pray for the fatherless the motherless the orphans the widow the widowers the single parents the um, singles the bachelors the spinsters um, the couples and everyone looking up unto you for one thing or the other father we pray that you will please grant all needs in Jesus name father we pray you will deliver the oppressed you will set the captives free you will heal the sick. You will let the barren to have children. You will let your name to be glorified in the life of everyone, Lord, in Jesus' name. We are covered with the blood of Jesus. If you tarry your coming, Lord, we beg you for long life, good health, and sound mind in Jesus' name. And if the rapture sound at any point in time, we pray that none of us will miss heaven in Jesus' name. And if by death you decide to call us home, we pray that every one of us will die the death of the righteous and not the death of the sinner in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, not to be like Lot's wife. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We are covered with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So, thank you so very much for taking your time to listen to this message. The good Lord continue to provide money for you to buy data and for you to be able to live a good life. Stay blessed till I come online again. God bless you. Thank you.